Hi, this is Mike at WinCNC, and today I'm going to do a short demo that will display some of the math functionality of Aspire and VCAR Pro. I'm going to start out with a hypothetical design that a customer would want cut into a five and a half inch OD pipe with a five inch ID. I have this design that they want to cut so that they can insert something into this that will fit inside and, and into these holes also but it will be fixed on the pipe so that the part will fit there. The actual part hole is 4.55 inches wide and 1.7366 inches tall. The actual thing that will insert into the hole is 4.5, about 4.5 inches wide and about 1.7 inches tall. And it has to fit in here, so the hole has to be slightly larger. Now, I'm going to close this, and I'm going to hide that layer. And now on the first layer here, I'm going to draw our circles. So I said that the outside radius or the outside diameter of the of the tube or pipe would be 5.5 inches so I've got that here I put my 0 0 in the center here I'll click create and I want a 5 inch inside diameter so now my 0 is at the center so I know that my radius on this inside is 2.5 inches. I also know that I need a 4.55 inch cord across here. And a cord is just a cross section of a circle. So I'm going to start with a line drawing tool and for my X I want to start with 4.55 over 2 because I only want half of this to be in my equation equals and it's 2.275 for half of it half of the width of that so I'll do a control C I'm going to copy that now I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to determine how high up this has to be from the center Pythagorean theorem is uh, uh, hypotenuse squared minus either side squared equals the other side squared. Or x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Okay, so I know that my radius on the inside is 2.5 inches so I can say 2.5 and I'll say to the power of 2 equals and I'll push the N key and jump to the end minus and I'll use the number that I copied here control V to copy that in to the power of 2 in other words I'm just squaring it equals 1.074375 so now I need the square root of that I'll jump to the end again and I'll use the same thing the power function and I'll say 0.5 um, any number to the power of 0.5 is the square root of that number and I'll say equals so I know that my y needs to be at that point so I'll click add and now I'll have a point over here and it's right on you can see it's right on the inside circle so now I've got to find this, the point over here where it matches up and since I drew the center since I drew x0 y0 in the center it's going to be much easier to do because since this side is positive, this side's negative. So I should be able to just get this, the negative of this number right here. 
and it should come out on the circle on the other side. And I'll just do a minus and add and finish. And now that's where my cord will be. That's a 4.55 inch line. And just to show you that it is a 4.55 inch line, I select it and I'll go to here. And that tells me that the width of this is 4.55 inches wide. Okay, next step is finding the angle from right here up to here. In other words, I'll just, I'll just draw a line from the center up to here. I need to know this angle. I actually need to know the angle from here all the way over to here around that circle or whatever. But in order to get that, all I've got to do is calculate half of this and multiply by 2. And since this is a right triangle, I can use uh, trigonometry to determine this. So the just to show you what I'm working with here, in trig, uh, I'm going to use this as my hypotenuse. This is going to be side opposite, and this is going to be side adjacent, because I want this angle right here. So I'm going to take the opposite over the hypotenuse, and that will give me the sine of the angle. Then I'm going to get the inverse of that, and that will tell me how many degrees that is. And I know that sounds complicated, but here's my calculator. This is not a math function that is in Aspire. So I have to use a calculator for this. So I know that my radius is 2.5. No, I don't want to start with 2.5. I want to start with this length across here. And to get that, I just go 4.55 over 2 equals. And now I divide that by my radius to point five equals and there's the sign of this angle right here now in order to get the number of degrees I have to get the inverse sign so I click the inverse key here and click the sign and that tells me that this angle right here is 65.505 and it keeps on going okay in order to get the number of degrees in this whole thing which this would be a duplicate in other words uh, in order to see this, I'm going to minimize here. We really need not only this angle, but we need plus this here because we're wanting to get, find out how many degrees are around this all the way around to here. And not only that, I want to know what they are from here all the way around to out here, not just on this inner side. So I come back to my calculator. All I've got to do now is multiply that by 2, and I have that. So I'm going to store that, and I know that I have 131 degrees around here, a little over 131 degrees. Okay, in order to determine how long my cut has to be around there, I can take that number of degrees multiply it by pi equals, divide that by 180 equals. Now all I got to do is multiply that by the radius of my outside circle. My outside circle is It's 5.5, so the radius would be 2.75. And I'll come back to my calculator. I thought I would. And the calculator's not wanting to come up, so I will minimize this and bring the calculator back up this way. I will multiply that 
times 2.75, say equals, and I get a number of 6.288, and I'll just go ahead and copy that. Minimize this, come back over to here, and just for the heck of it, I'm going to put that number in here. Control V and come over to this edge so I can see it. I'm going to chop it off somewhere about here. Delete and I'm going to apply that. Okay. Too big, so I'll make it. And now I'll close this and I'll grab this. I'm just going to pull it down here so that we can remember that. Okay, that's 6.288062. All right, so just to make sure that I got that calculated right, I can do this a different way. I'm going to go here and I'm going to extend this line right here out until it meets this. And to do that, I just click on this line that I want to extend, and then I click on the line that I want to stop want it to stop at. So I click here. And now I have this line and it just continues out until it touches this outside circle. So there's a way that I can create an arc that's exactly that size. So I will click here. I want to make sure that I'm center start and end because I'm going to create an arc. I go to my center point of 0, 0. Move out here until I get this little box and that tells me that I'm at the end of this line. And then I just move over here and I get that box again. I click. Okay, so I can come over and close. I, I've created an arc right there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I've created an arc. So now to measure that arc, I come to Contour Properties. I click here and it says that it's 6.288. So we look down here, 6.288. So that shows you that I did calculate that correctly. Okay, now I think I want to close this. want to turn this layer off. Actually, let's see. I want those numbers, 6.2. Eight, eight. So I want to copy this to slot. Now I will hide this layer and bring that one up. Okay, what I want to do is I want to stretch this because it can't be this size anymore. It's got to be cut around that outside layer on a rotary axis in order for it to fit this has to be 6.288 inches long. So I'll come over to this and this is my set size thing and I don't want it to stretch in height I only want to change the width. So I'm going to change this to 6.288 and I'll click apply and now if I wrap that around a curve it would be the correct distance around the arc. Turn it back on kinda hard to see but it would it would stretch around here if you if you were able to bend that it would stretch around there. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Okay, now that I have this all drawn out like this, I can somewhat simulate what it will do on a rotary axis, at least to show you where the tool would wind up and things like that. So the first thing I want to do is select all this. And by the way, clicking on the right side and dragging a box to the left selects 
everything that it touches. If I do it on the left and drag to the right, it'll only select the things that it completely encloses. I want to get all of this, and I want to go to here, and I want to turn on this layer right here. And what I've got here is I've got a, a quarter inch wide rectangle drawn that I'm acting, it's, it's simulating a quarter inch end mill. So this, this cut will not be perfect as far as lining up perfectly with this end mill, but it will work well enough to, to do this cut that I need. So what I've got to do here is I've got to rotate this and to simulate it. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to select the center. In other words, right here is where it's going to be my rotating point. And now I'm just going to go up here and grab one of these angles. And I think I'm going to try to zoom in a little here so we can see what's actually where it's actually going to. I'm going to go up here and, and I'm just going to manually move this over until this corner lines up with my end mill. And I did a little too, right there. Now you can see here, if we zoom in, that it's going to cut just a little more off here on this corner. But that's nothing. That's that's. I mean, I could correct that with more math and and things like that. But I don't really see a reason to. That's only taking a tiny, tiny fraction of more material away on that inside cut, and it and my part will still work. Then I can simulate going back in the other direction just by rotating it around this way. And you can see that all of this in here will be cut away. And what you'll be left with is, is where the edge of this tool is, right there. And I'm trying to, right there is, is where it will cut to. And all of this will be open space from there to where the tool passed right here, where I'm mousing over now, to right in there can't get the mouse quite up there but that that shows you how it would cut away it'll cut all of this part away and like I said it will overcut just a tiny fraction of an inch but nothing that will uh, matter as far as this part goes hope this helps you understand how this works and, and I hope it uh, gives you a little bit of uh, idea of what some of the math functions are. Hope it hope you learn something from uh, the math functions. You may have already known it. If not, uh, then uh, I hope it helps you. Thanks for watching.